If you do any kind of presentations, you know that in order to hold your audience, you have to make your presentations exciting. So today on Let's Talk Computers, we'll be looking at one of the smallest yet full-featured presentation tools available on the market. And it's our pleasure to have as our guest again, John Mywall, Marketing Manager for Pathways Innovations and Technologies, Inc. And welcome back to Let's Talk Computers, John. Thank you, Alan. Thank you for having me again. Well, let's face it. If you had to only rely on PowerPoint or other slideshow programs to do your presentations, I guarantee you, your presentation is going to be boring. And as a presenter, you need to have the right tools to hold your audience's attention. There are different kinds of PowerPoint presentations, of course, and some of them are more interesting than others. Yeah, they they can get pretty dry, if only for the reason that you're, you're somewhat locked on to the slides that you can talk about. And when you have something like a document camera, uh, you can put any number of things underneath the document camera. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be a piece of paper. It could be a 3D object or or whatever it might be. So it gives you a lot of versatility in the things that you talk about. We had a chance to take a look at your new Solo 5 document camera. And let me tell you, wow, this is one neat device. It's smaller than the other document cameras, but this thing is so full-featured and has so many new additions to it that the only word you can describe it is wow. Yeah, we like to say that it does twice as much as other document cameras do, but at half the price. MSRP is starting out at two ninety nine. I mean, there are discounts from there. Compare that to, to cameras that cost 600 or $800. I mean, they, they get up there, they, you know, even to $1,000 sometimes. They don't even do half as much as this camera does, and it's easy. One cable to hook it up, one cable to power it, just just a single cable going to that USB port. There's no extra power cord, no nothing else that you need. Once you plug that in, the software is on the device already. You're ready to go. Flip it open, and you're ready to go. And it, when, when you don't want to use it, you just flip it down. It fits on the corner. The, the base is about four inches by four inches. It fits nicely with your stapler and your thing of pens and your uh, tape dispenser. It's, it's like one of those. It could just fit in the corner until you need it, and then you just fold it out and use it whatever way you need to. And the Solo 5 allows you to zoom in really closely or zoom out a lot on different subjects. So you could be talking about, let's say, a front page of a newspaper. You could show the whole front page of the newspaper and talk about you know, th- today's news in general, in the same breath, just zoom in and, and lock onto an image or an article on that newspaper and just focus on that particular area and then move the actual newspaper image around with the software. You're not moving the newspaper around itself, but the image around and kind of make your own little virtual PowerPoint, if you will. It gives you a lot of versatility. You can stop, go back, do whatever you need to as the audience reacts, asks questions whatever it might be, to keep their interest and also to answer all their questions and concerns. Anytime you do any kind of presentation, one thing is absolutely certain. The moment that you start, it's going to change the first time somebody asks you a question. <laughs> right, yeah, there's always somebody in the audience that has, uh, that, uh, has a question that's going to just take the whole thing off balance and send you down a, a, the garden path, as it were. You need a tool that's going to help you, whether you have some kind of overhead you want to put up there or you have a 3D object that you have. You're going to have to change in midstream, aren't you? But if you did have to, you got that ability. It works with your computer. So it's a USB camera, essentially. It's just a USB device. goes off of your computer. So you really could have a PowerPoint going on at the same time. You could be using a PowerPoint actively, and then when somebody asks you a question, you could switch to the camera. And the camera itself, like I said, it can be telescoped up or, or moved down on an object. The head moves in just about any direction. So you could actually... Tilt it up to show yourself, or you know, you could show the audience, or you could show, let's say, a, a whiteboard if you happen to have a whiteboard there and you're, you want to write on that, and then go back to the PowerPoint presentation if you wanted to. So, in other words, you, you have options. Well, first of all, this is a true five megapixel resolution. I mean, this really can get down to the nitty gritty of looking at anything that you put underneath it. The five megapixel resolution. There's, there's a lot of talk about megapixels these days with cameras. You know, you, you hear about iPhones having 18 megapixels at this point. But the thing with this camera is that it doesn't just have a 5 megapixel sensor. It actually shows 5 megapixel resolution. So it has the ability to show you 
2592 by 1944. So you're actually seeing the full effect of that sensor. It's not just that the sensor is really good, and you can't get that resolution. And this will do 1080p. And the frame rate is, depending on the, on the resolution you have, it uh, gets up to 30 frames per second. It's a USB camera, so the way to get 30 frames per second is to lower the resolution. Higher resolutions have slower frame rates, but it all just depends on what you're doing under the camera. So if you need a really detailed image, you might raise the resolution and not do as much movement underneath it. But if you need to do a lot of movement underneath the, the camera, let's say you're working on a math problem, you're a math teacher or something like that, you don't want your uh, students being disoriented by a choppy frame rate, you lower the resolution a little bit and you'll, you'll get a nice smooth frame rate. You can actually do A3 capture all the way down to, say, a quarter. I mean, that's how small you can get or how large you can get. Focal length is about a half inch. So with that 5 megapixel image and the ability to mechanically lower the device itself, so you can actually physically lower it and it has a weighted base so it's not going to tip over or anything. And there's also a digital zoom within the, the software as well where you can zoom in with the software. Uh, that 5 megapixel is capturing a very detailed image. So when you zoom in with the software, it's not losing a whole lot of resolution. It actually has it. So you do have the ability to zoom in on something without losing a lot of detail. You know, if you want to see, let's say, the, the very fine text on a dollar, for example, you can do that. Or, or the tiny print on, on a quarter, something along those lines, you can do that. It's not quite microscopic level, but it really is a very fine image. Yeah, we had a chance to take a look at T3 and T5, and we talked about that last time. But this actually has double the speed of those documenters, doesn't it? One way of thinking about this is it's like the, the T5, only it's the new improved T5. The T5 was a great product. People are still using it to this day. But this is new one can do so much more. It's uh, got autofocus, an autofocus lock. It can be moved in any position, and it's shorter. The base is, is better weighted, so not likely to, to be tipped over. Or, so it's, it's really the next generation of cameras, and, and we expect for People that buy bought the T3 and T5, once, once they see this one, they're going to want this. And it'll be a camera you could use for several years to come. You talk about autofocus. You actually have a button on the base of the unit that you push it, and it sets the focus automatically for you. And then you can lock it in on that particular part of the image that you want to focus on. A lot of cameras do autofocus right now. Autofocus, if you're moving underneath the camera it's going to sometimes refocus as, as objects come in and come out or uh, that it detects new things in the frame. And what autofocus lock lets you do is once you have the focus set to where you want it, you hit that autofocus lock, it stays focused at that point, at that focal point, and then you can move under the camera you know, at ease. And the camera's not going to move in and out uh, as it would when you're, when you're autofocusing. Then when you need to autofocus again, you just hit that autofocus button, and it will go back to autofocusing until you, again, want to lock it. Now, the Solo 5 is just well constructed. It is made out of metal, not cheap plastic. This thing has some weight to it, doesn't it? One of the things that we were trying to do was have a very durable device. It folds down, so it's also portable. But, you know, we wanted it so that when you put it in your computer bag or, or your backpack or whatever it is that you're going to be using, that it's not going to be damaged by the process of traveling. There is a warranty, by the way, so there's a two-year warranty with product registration, and that can even be expanded beyond that. When you're looking at the camera, it has a little thumb button on it that says A4 or A3. What does that do? Right there by the lens, there's a, there's a little dial that, for A4, A3. And what happens there is when you telescope the image up, the aspect ratio could be sideways. So in the software, you're able to rotate the image uh, 90 degrees at a time, 360 degrees all the way in, in either direction. But if the thing that you're looking at is, for example, an open book, you'd want to be able to read the book you know, from where you're sitting, and you also want to be able to show the book so that it's readable to your audience. So in order to accomplish that, we have the ability to rotate the lens physically as well as rotate the image digitally in the software. The long story short of that is that you'll be able to read the document that you're displaying and your audience will be able to read the document that, they're, that you are trying to show them at the same time. 
because this is a small thing, so it could be positioned in any way. It could be on any side of your document. Uh, it could be above it, below it, to the side, what, whatever, wherever you want it. It's, it's so versatile. And what are we looking at as far as the cost of this product? MSRP is at two ninety nine. And I always quote MSRP price because I'm with the manufacturer. There are resellers throughout the country who uh, sell it for less, particularly for educators. We have a lot of people in, in the K-12 field and also in higher education that like to use these for teaching their classes. And you make a lot of different types of document tools. What are some of the other type of tools that you make? We have a variety of document camera models. Roughly, they're all priced around the same level. So they're all around 299 or even lower. We did that because we want for people to pick out the camera that's right for them. We don't want people to pick out a camera because it's the cheap one. Uh, so everything's priced about the same, but we have uh, document cameras with two cameras in them, for example, for doing picture-in-picture. -picture. That would be the Neo 3, which also outputs directly to VGA. So if you didn't want to go through the computer, you could just hook this right up to a projector, but you could also take advantage of the software we've been talking about. We have another one called the Mini 5 that's uh, going to be coming out very shortly. And it's a real small one. It's about the size of a candy bar. It could fit in your pocket. So if you really need a mobile one, that's, that would be the one for you. And then, of course, we've got the old standbys, the, the T3 and the T5. The T3 has been one of those cameras that, I mean, we, we've seen just immense growth selling the Hovercam T3. Uh, people really take to it very strongly. That one's only 219 MSRP. It has the same software as the Solo 5 doesn't quite move in the same amount of positions, and it's a 3-megapixel camera, but still a great device. And if somebody would like to find out more information about the Solo 5 and some of your other great document scanners, where would they go? The site is www.thehovercam.com. That's T-H-E-H-O-V-E-R-C-A-M.com. Or you can call us. We're in San Diego, California. You can call us at 858-750-3499. And we're more than happy to answer questions or, or talk to anybody about our, our devices, give them more information. Well, John, it looks like we've run out of time. There's so much more to talk about on your brand new Solo 5 document scanner. I look forward to continuing this conversation next time. Well, thanks, Alan. Forward to it next time.